you've been focused on how do you have an intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father. And the first time we talked about what does it mean to have an intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father. Then we looked at, well, what keeps us from having an intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father. And then we said there are four essential things that you need to have in place in order to be able to have that consistent intimacy with the Heavenly Father. First of all, we said you got to be able to reorder your private world. Then we said you got to learn to be still. And first of all, we dealt with you got to you, you got to deal with that noise pollution. And then secondly, under still, we talked about you got to slow down. And then last time we looked at the third essential, which is solitude, solitude. But today, and I think we're going to wind up our series today on intimacy with your heavenly Father. And the fourth essential is this, you got to surrender. You've got to surrender. And so I'm going to read from Proverbs chapter number three, verses one and two to begin with. And this is going to be from the Amplified Bible. And this is what the scripture says. My son, or you could say daughter, my son, forget not my law or teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Now listen. For length of days and years of life, a life worth living, and tranquility or peace, oh boy, inward and outward, and continuing through old age till death, these shall be added to you. So what he's saying here is if you want to have all these benefits, then you've got to understand where they come from. So where do they come from? How do we experience this peace? How do we experience all these uh, superlative benefits that he mentions here? Well, we got to go to verse number five and six, and these are very familiar verses, but listen up. He says, lean not, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding in all your ways, recognize and acknowledge him. And here's the promise, he will direct and make straight and plain your paths. So the question, first of all, is what does it mean to trust the Lord? Let me give you some thoughts on this. It means to throw oneself down on one's face. It means to lie and <laughs> spread eagled uh, on complete reliance. Another one is do a belly flop on God. So what it means to trust in the Lord is this. It means to trust him with everything that shames you. It means to trust him with everything that terrifies you. It means to trust him with everything that holds you back. It means to trust him with everything or everyone who frustrates you. It means to trust him with your dreams and your aspirations. Now, if we trust the Lord, as it says in Proverbs chapter number three, five and six, what will the possible results be if we do that? Let me enumerate these as we close. One, the more intimate you are with the Father and trust Him, the more you will indeed trust Him in all the things of daily life. The more you will respect Him, the less you will fear those around you the more you will depend on him. And the more you depend on him, by the way, in a good way, the less dependent you will be on others. The more you will obey his word, the more you will risk, the more you will resemble him. You will experience his love more. You will be more fulfilled in your life. So, so the key here now, the fourth essential, is surrender. So here's a thought. Surrender is the key that unlocks the vault of God's best for you. So we need to quit holding God at arm's length. We need to get dissatisfied uh, with, with not having an intimate relationship with the Father. We need, here's a way to say it, we need to quit boxing God. So if you draw close to the Father, he promises to draw close to you. Well, I would end this up by saying there's no better place to be 
than to be close to the Heavenly Father. You think about that.